Joining me now, Carly Atchison, national spokeswoman for the Ron DeSantis campaign. Uh, welcome back. Nice to see you. Uh, Israel was a big focus last night, as it should be with the conflict in the Middle East. Ron DeSantis said we have to look out for our people. He said you should not try to direct Israel's war effort. He said he served in Iraq. He understands that part of the world. And he said if you harm an American service member, you'll have hell to pay if I'm president. He was also asked, though, about sending U.S. troops and said this. We have to look out for our people. When there are hostages, commander in chief, you have to do whatever you can to get them done. But the overall issue with this is this administration is trying to hobble Israel from being able to defend itself. Ron gets asked a question and he doesn't answer it. Your question was very specific. You said, would you send American troops as commander in chief? And he went on to this minute and 30 second Hosanna about his knowledge of the military. So a bit ambiguous, at least that was the criticism. Does he support sending troops to the Middle East additionally with the conflict ongoing? I thought it was pretty rich of Chris Christie to come after Ron DeSantis, who's the only veteran in this race and knows personally what it means to go and serve overseas in a dangerous part of the world. Ron DeSantis was completely correct when he said we, he will do everything he can as commander in chief to protect Americans and get them home safely. What that means depends on the intelligence that he has when he gets to the White House. Uh, and for Chris Christie to play this game that the media plays just because he didn't like Ron DeSantis' answer uh, is one thing, but then to go after him and pretend like Ron DeSantis doesn't know what he's talking about when he's the only one who's put on the uniform and actually deployed overseas, uh, that was a rich moment. He was also asked about the situation at the southern border with illegal immigration and the fentanyl crossing the United States border. Here's part of that. The commander in chief not only has a right, you have a responsibility to fight back against these people. And does so that mean gonna, shooting first? It means you're going to you're going to uh, categorize them as foreign terrorist organizations, uh, and we will identify just like we would anywhere. Care to elaborate, elaborate, Carly, on the shoot first comment? I think what Ron DeSantis is laying out might be controversial for some people in the media. It's not controversial for angel moms who have lost sons and daughters to this fentanyl crisis that we are seeing that is fueled by the Mexican drug cartels who are coming through our, our southern border. Uh, this you're, You guys have done a great job covering this crisis. Uh, we saw this week a Chinese nationalist, adult men coming through the border. This is absolutely a situation that's completely out of control, and Ron DeSantis is 100 percent correct. The commander in chief not only has a right, he has a responsibility to hold these people accountable for the damage that they're taking, the death toll that has big, that is at their hands. Um, and so, again, want to point back to his service overseas. This is somebody who advised, advised Navy SEALs in Iraq on rules of engagement. Um, this idea that we don't have the capability, the intelligence for profile recognition to know who is coming through our border. Uh, understanding who poses a threat. It's very obvious when somebody has a backpack and is shepherding people through that that is not somebody who should be treated like an innocent person coming through seeking asylum. That is somebody who wants to do damage in this country. Ron DeSantis is right, and we should meet those people with deadly force at the border. Although the former president was not on the stage last night, Carly, uh, his name came up a lot. So maybe that didn't. They, they called it Voldemort, the name no one will say. Chris Christie did. I want to play a moment um, talking about the former president's mental fitness and your candidate's response. Years so you deliver do you think he's big fit. Result. You do we should think. not laminate somebody he won't who's, answer. In, who's, who's almost 80 years old. Okay. He's afraid to answer. <laughs> He's, no, you have to no. either either you're afraid or you're not listening. No, it's not. There's a simple you don't, you question. Don't want to hear is he fit? Is he fit? Hey, hey, no, 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 no one can hear this. No one that. can hear you. They can't hear you. Why wouldn't he come out and just say he's not fit? He said it before off a debate stage. The point that Ron DeSantis was making is that somebody who's 80 years old does not have the ability to do the job. Somebody who's like Ron DeSantis, who's 45. Uh, to do the job as president. This holds true for Joe Biden. It holds true for Donald Trump. That's the point that Ron DeSantis was making. Again, for Chris Christie to play this game of you have to answer the question the way I want you to answer the question, he's just seeking his 15 minutes of fame on that stage. Ron DeSantis was there to present to Americans directly, look, I'm somebody, I'm 45, I'm in the prime of my life. 
Um, I'm ready to go on day one. He will take the 2 a.m. calls. He will be working just as hard in the White House as he is on the campaign trail. That's the point he was making. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.